While DPD and DART Police Departments lay three of their brothers to rest, the investigation into the ambush is far from over. This as we learn more now about the man behind the attack, Micah Johnson. Our Steve Pickett joins us live from downtown Dallas with the latest on the investigation. Steve. Despite those funerals and the memorials, as you mentioned, there is still obviously an ongoing investigation. We're right across the street from where federal agents and the ATF are involved. As you can see here, we've actually have officers from all over the country who are now coming here to essentially pay their respects to the other individuals who are part of this investigation. We now know, obviously, Micah Johnson had a number of weapons with him, but maybe the most dangerous weapon he had was his outlook and view on all of this that led him to this point. Michael Johnson, according to officials from the Mesquite School District, never stood out. Released school records show academic achievement far below average. Only 23 other students from his graduating class of 2009 received a lower ranking than Johnson. We basically feel that Michael was pushed to these conditions as a black man. By the time Babu Amawale met Johnson, Johnson was immersed in the pro-black movement of Dallas's South Side. Omawale leads the Huey P. Newton Gun Club. Earlier this year, the gun club faced off against a white supremacist group on Dallas's MLK Boulevard. Micah Johnson was not a member of the club, Omawale says, but he did belong to a coalition of ideology and belief. He was a member of this community. He was a member of the, what we call the uh, uh, conscious community. So he came out to social events uh, such as Kwanzaa Fest, Harambe festivals, he would come out to hear some of the speakers speak. We're saying that Michael made an individual decision and we respect his decision. You know, we're not going to sit up and say Michael shouldn't have done what he done. America knows why he did what he did and it had to come to that climax. Uh, for many, that is a very jarring statement from anyone and in particular, uh, Mr. Omawale, who says they are not an offensive organization. He defines it as a defensive organization, uh, one that helps his community defend themselves. Uh, he stressed again that uh, Michael Johnson was not a member of this organization. He saw them, he saw him in these gatherings, but he says he was not a part of this organization. And any suggestion that they were part of what that man did here, he says folks would be mistaken. Reporting live, Steve Pickett, CBS 11 News.